the discovery network or what's called the internal management network and this is how it works the internal management network is a network that uses IPv6 so it's going to be using IPv6 these are the default settings okay IPv6 and VLAN ID 3939 Okay, so we have each one of the nodes connected to this network. And we also have the VxRail Manager VM. Connected to the same network. Okay, so the VxRail Manager VM is in listening mode. Okay, when you add a new node, the new node will come with this network pre-configured. So once you add the node to the environment and connect it to the network, there is a service called Loudmouth, which is a VMware service. Broadcasts its availability. It's going to send notification through the network, okay? Hence the requirement of IPv6 multicast, which is one of the unique requirements. If you want to use your own switches, we're not going to ask you about too much stuff. So, uh, must be a managed switch with certain capabilities. The most important one is to support IPv6 multicasting, specifically for this feature. With that said, for customers who do not use IPv6, they have the possibility to use IPv4 for this configuration, but it will require an additional effort to manually configure the network. Basically, you're just going to switch to a traditional way of adding nodes instead of automating it like this. So. Host number four here is going to say, hey, I'm here. Could you pick me? That signal will be detected by the VxFail manager. And through the software, it will tell you, here is a node detected. You click on Add. Then you add the details for that specific node, your ho the host name, the login, passwords, IP addresses for vSAN, vMotion, and management the VxRail software will automate the configuration of the node, right? So that's what the discovery network is used for. Any questions about that? Then we have the vCenter server network, okay? The vCenter server distributed uh, port group is actually used to enable communication. It's a port group that we're going to use to connect vCenter with VxRail manager. We want these two VMs to talk to each other, okay? So, th so they can exchange information through the API. We will put them together into a port group called vCenter Server, okay? Um, so here you can see what I've been explaining. Discovery, or also called internal network, is used for discovery when we are building the cluster or post deployment for detecting additional nodes. By default, it uses VLAN 3939, uh, and it uses IPv6. The management network is your regular management network. We also call it here external management, and it's used for um, the ESXi management. This is intact by default. Same thing for vCenter server, used to enable the communication between the vXFAN manager and vCenter. This is intact by default. Then you have a network for vMotion, which is tagged. A network for vSAN also has a VLAN assigned to it, and one or more uh, networks for the guest VMs, for your production traffic, typically uh, assigned a VLAN ID as well. Now, when we want to deploy a cluster, 
Deployment, by the way, is not configured in this class. There is a dedicated three days class called installation and implementation that covers the deployment phase. Uh, but just to give you a brief idea about how vSphere is deployed, because it's completely different from uh, normal deployment of vSphere or vSAN environment. Normally, uh, you get to, you're going to need to configure the cluster first using a configuration portal. Okay, you just add the name of the cluster, the version of the software, the hardware configuration, and stuff like that. And then you need to specify a network profile. Network profile is actually the complete network configuration. All of that is done using the configuration portal. So the profiles you can choose from are three profiles. First one is called VDS, predefined network profile. Second one is called a custom network profile with new VDS. And third one is called a custom network profile with existing VDS. So first one runs the default configuration. Okay, so this one is typically used when you want to use 100% of what's recommended by VxRail team. You don't want to make some specific changes. You just want to use uh, what's recommended uh, by VxVail. This is used at the moment we deploy the cluster and it's going to create a virtual distributed switch during deployment. Okay, So this one cannot be changed. You can't make any change to the configuration. Just select it, select the number of uplinks. It's going to match that uh, based on the configuration of the nodes. Uh, to, to be more precise, based on the number of ports available in each node, and deploy the, the VDS. It creates a single VDS, and it is configured with the standard port group names. Okay, They are generated during the deployment. Now, for customers who want to create a new VDS, but they are looking for more flexibility in terms of some network settings. Like, for instance, they, they want to enable jumbo frames from day one. They want to uh, make some changes to the port group names. So it, it can match with, um, you know, the, their naming convention in their environment. They want to deploy the environment with a very specific uh, team and failover policies. They don't want to use the default ones. You can select custom network profile with new VDS. So this is going to deploy a new VDS, similar to the first option, but with very specific uh, configuration. The last one is called custom network profile with existing VDS. And as the name indicates, this is for customers who are already running a vSphere environment, for instance. They already have a vCenter. They already have couple of clusters, and they want to use simply the existing VDS to deploy this new VxRail. So you will take the configuration of that VDS, the existing VDS, and add the additional port groups, which are very specific to VxRail, like the discovery, the vCenter server. And we may add additional port groups and use that to deploy our cluster. 